Okay, so Jeremiah 23 and verses 28 and 29. So verse 28 um, reads like this. Um, the prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is chaff to the wheat, says the Lord. Verse 29, is not my hammer, sorry, is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. So um, the Lord giving that uh, instruction about his word. Um, so he's, he says, he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Right. So um, the word of God, the Lord is saying the the or the importance of speaking His word faithfully, and also you know one thing that we see in that verse is that um, the importance of receiving His word, you know, uh, importance of um, carrying His word and speaking His word faithfully. So the Lord values that, and He's saying you know. Um, let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. So, so uh, a couple of things is that one, as a minister of God, you know, we need to um, not speak from our own resources, but re really receive his word. Uh, and the second thing is to speak, uh, once we've received his word, to speak his word faithfully. Okay, so that seems to be the, uh, well, that seems to be the desire of God's heart. Right. Then we look at verse 29. The Lord is talking about, um, uh, is giving a description about his word. And he's saying, is not my word like a fire? Okay. Um, and we've, uh, you know, we've, we've read this verse and we've kind of seen the description of God's word, uh, you know, akin to a fire, likened to a fire. So what does fire do? Fire, uh, fire burns fire immediately you know that brings about a change uh, fire refines fire cleanses all that you know so his word is like a fire that burns right and and the second thing that we see is that the lord saying and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces right so word is like fire that burns word is like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces and uh, so the the importance of receiving his word, the importance of receiving the fire of his word, the importance of receiving the hammer, a hammer that breaks the rock, the hardened rock into pieces. So that's his word, right? So we, we see many other, inst uh, you know, instructions and descriptions of God's word. But for today, you know, he's looking at his word being the fire, his word being the hammer, and the Lord's uh, desire that we speak his word faithfully. Right? So to speak his word faithfully would mean not distort it, not change it in any way, not add to it, not delete from it, um, but to speak it faithfully. Right. So, so let's pray and um, let's just ask the Lord, Lord, um, that your word, which is like a hammer, which is like a fire, Lord, may we receive it and may we uh, speak it like you want us to speak it. Right, faithfully. Okay, let's let's pray. Father, we we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this verse, these verses that we read just now. We thank you, Lord. It's it's your desire that um, we first of all hunger and thirst for your word and receive your word. And uh, yes, Lord, from from this we see that you're more than willing to give us your word, Lord everything that needs to be communicated, that message, Lord, uh, you want to give it. And so we receive it, Lord, even as you are willing to. Lord, we want to be willing and we want to be yielded, surrender to receive your word, Father God. And uh, yes, Master, even as your desire is that we speak it faithfully, communicate it faithfully, God. Yes, Master, uh, in season, out of season, Lord, irrespective of uh, how the environment is, irrespective of how we are feeling at that moment, God, I pray that uh, we go beyond that. And uh, even as you empower us by your spirit, Lord, that we would speak your word faithfully. And Father, we thank you, Lord, even as we look at these descriptions of how amazing your word is. Your word is like fire that burns, God. And your word is like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces. Your word is powerful. 
Your word is something that refines, cleanses, Lord, changes, God, burns away, God, every chaff. And your word, so powerful, so strong, that it will break this hardest of rock into pieces. And Master, we thank you for these descriptions. We help us to remember this, Lord, remember these descriptions, even as we receive your word, Lord, and speak your word faithfully. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, let's um, let's just move on to um, today's um, session. Um, anything that you recall from last class? Um, last uh, when when was it? Tuesday, right? So anything that stood out? Anything that's that was highlighted? Um, you can just put it on the chat and uh, anything that stood out for you. I think we looked at communication and we also looked at uh, homiletics in the word um, that preaching is relevant, preaching is not outdated, it's not an outdated uh, you know, practice, but it's something for today. Um, okay, anything that um, stood out for you, you can just put it on the chat. Um, anything that was highlighted, Anything that you learnt? Um, anything at all? <laughs> okay. Mm. I don't see any comments, so... Okay, fine. So, um, See, what we see is that, um, you know, the, the communication, like the, the verse that we read just now, the communication of um, the God-inspired word, God-inspired uh, message, it's so important, right? And uh, Paul also, uh, I think it was Peter, it says that, you know, let him who speaks, speak as the oracles of God, right? You speak as the mouth purse, mouthpiece of God, as a spokesperson of God, um, it's exciting, you know, to be uh, to be doing that. It's exciting, adventurous journey to be doing that, to be a spokesperson for God, uh, knowing that you're representing the kingdom, knowing that you're you know you're sharing the heart and mind of God, uh, you know, to uh, to an audience, it could be uh, it could be just one person, it could be a small crowd, but whoever it may be, you know, to knowing that you are uh, sharing the heart and mind of God, right, and knowing that the Word of God has intrinsic power and ability to change, right, lives of people when it's received and when it's mixed with faith, you know, it, it bears fruit, and also knowing that the word that God is watching over His Word. Okay, so that's the thing, you know. We are that's the importance of sharing His word because He watches over His word to perform it, right? So, so it's a it's a very important um, task. It's a very significant task, and it's a, it's an awesome privilege to to be invited to do this, right? So today uh, we're going to look at uh, chapter four, and into chap in chapter four we see, you know, uh, as important as the message is. Right, because it's it's from him. Uh, so also, you know, or more so, the you know how we as people uh, receive it and communicate it. Right. So we're talking about the person, about you know, just using a gender neutral term, the man. Um, right, saying that the man, the preacher, you know, what what should be. The mindset, what should be the qualification, um, etc. Right. So first and foremost, we when we look at um, uh, when we look at uh, the uh, the instruction that Paul gives Timothy, you know, it's in First Timothy chapter four and verse sixteen. Uh, let me just read that out. It's there in your notes as well. Uh, we're looking at chapter four. So First Timothy chapter four, and uh, okay, verse sixteen, right? Okay. Okay, this is what we see. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. 
Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Okay, the Good News Bible, this is what it says, the Good News Version. Watch yourself and watch your teaching. Okay, so watch yourself, first and foremost. Um, so take a hard look at yourself. Um, watch yourself. Be careful uh, about yourself. Your life, your character, that matters because you are the spokesperson or you are the vessel or you are the delivery person who's delivering it. So take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Well, the doctrine is important, the teaching is important, the message is important, but the man is important because he's the carrier of the message. So take heed, be careful. Um, you know, like somebody said, uh, preaching is proclaiming truth to personality, through personality, right? proclaiming truth to through personality. Like we know that God's word is uh, is perfect, and uh, you know there's nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. It is you know it accomplishes what uh, what it, uh, what God releases the word for. But we as vessels, human vessels, you know we are works in progress, right? We are. We are works in progress, and we are being consecrated. We are being sanctified. Uh, we know that we are works in progress. So therefore, we need to take heed to ourselves first and foremost, so that the message is not tainted by the man. Okay, but God works despite all that. But we have a responsibility, right? To to our responsibility is uh, to take heed to ourselves, to be careful. Um, so. Uh, Behind the the whole the message uh, be, that is being preached is also the conviction about the call and the qualification of the preacher. So let's look at the call. Okay, now all of us are called to communicate the message. Yes or no? Right. All of us are called. If we are disciples of the Lord Jesus, if we are followers of the Lord Jesus, then we are called. And whom the Lord has called, He He anoints, um, He uh, empowers, He changes, refines, and he, he brings us to the right audience in order to uh, share the word, right? share the message. So um, we are called in that sense, right? Um, and some of us might be called for, and our call would be very, very specific in the sense that maybe we are called for or to the fivefold ministry right the apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher maybe we are called to to that right um, but whatever it is you know uh, whether it's a fivefold whether it's um, you know whether we are called to um, not in that sense a fivefold but then whatever we are doing wherever we are the call of god is there and we need to make it sure like scripture says you know we need to make our calling sure in the sense you be convinced about it right uh, and not be in any doubt about it. And you know that God has called you. Okay. Now that's very very important because um, all of us who are called and uh, who, who are you know we maybe we are called to a specific people. We are called to a specific environment. We are called to a particular you know audience, a people group. Um, and maybe we are you know in the process of. Uh, you know, uh, maybe you have something in your heart. You know, there's a, there's a, um, there's that prompting there. Okay, God, uh, God wants me to do this, uh, but we're not sure, right? But the thing is that we need to be sure that He has. We need to be, uh, you know, without uh, any doubt in our minds. Um, uh, we need to know that. Okay, and 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 be convinced that it is God. It is not my own doing. It is not my own psyching up myself up, but it's. It's uh, you know an answer to his call because the thing is, as we journey on into the call of God, as we journey on to be spokesperson for God, you know, to be the preacher that God has called us to be, you know, we we will face situations, we will face challenges, we will face uh, things that challenge our call, even, right? So at those moments, you know, what will uh, will will keep us? Uh, going forward, what will keep us going in our journey is the conviction that you know whom has who has called you. Right? 
is the conviction that you have been called in the first place and that you, you have been called for this particular purpose. Um, right? and, uh, when, you, when we read about, uh, you know, throughout history, when we read about um, some of the men and women of God, and especially those who have, you know, come to our nation and um, uh, you know, come to India and uh, you know other nations and and persisted in the call of God, persisted in the ministry uh, through the face of dangers, in the face of danger, sorry, and in the face of all those challenges. You see that there was this unwavering, of course, faithfulness to God, but also this unwavering conviction that. God had called them to that place and called them, called them, you know, into that, um, into that particular environment, right? So, so that is what would keep them going day in, day out, because you know, you know, I, I'm not feeling okay today. I'm not in the mood today, but I know that God has called me, right? At the end of the day, it's it's not my feeling, it's not my emotions, but I know that God has given me this assignment, and I'm reminded of it over and over again, despite all the downs and all the ups. Okay, so so that's um, extremely important. Okay, so um, well, how, how is the call of God? Uh, you know, uh, we're not going back to the first semester. Um, you know, the subject, the fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. You would have gone through that and looked at it. But the thing is that, well, there could be an event that marks marks us. You know, saying that okay, this happened. And uh, I know, you know, this event is just etched in my life. This encounter is etched in my heart, and I know that God has called me. For some, it's it's that, right? And you know, you just look back at that event, look back, and they say, okay, there's no amount of data, no amount of information, no amount of reasoning can ever replace that bitter because it's forever etched in my memory. God called, God spoke, God said this, and and that's it. That settles it. Okay. For some of us, it's that. For some of us, it's it's a gradual journeying and a gradual increasing conviction. Hey, this is what I'm meant to be doing. Okay, uh, and many of us could find ourselves in that place where saying, okay, it is growing. I'm I'm not sure yet, but it's growing. Even those of us who had that that encounter, you know, that marked us, even we could have the sense of a okay, I don't know the whole thing fully yet, right? I don't have all the answers yet, but I know that uh, you know there is this sense of God's call within me, right? So, so irrespective of what it is, whether it's an event or whether it's a growing conviction, right? So, uh, you know, that is that is, that is how. Uh, you know, we we are convinced of uh, we ourselves. We are convinced of God's call, right? It's a growing conviction, or it's it's an event that is uh, marking us. Okay, so uh, and it's a journey that we make, and it's it's it could be, you know, the Holy Spirit is bringing proof from the Word. It's it's uh, he's yeah he's speaking to us. He's day in and day out again, you know, giving us proof. He's maybe you know in the, uh, the early days. I remember that. People, uh, he would he would send people to confirm the call, either through the prophetic, um, either through a you know simple word of encouragement. You know, times when we were doubting, times when we uh, when we look back and say, "Did I hear right?" Right? He would send people. He would send his people to strengthen and confirm the word that is already spoken. Right. So the Holy Spirit does that, and it's. Um, it's again the the body, you know the 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 body of Christ. So the people of God, whom He has placed in our lives, confirming that over and over again. Okay, so it's very important for us to be convinced. Okay, um, okay. So uh, so that's something that uh, you know you just need to be assured of. Um, first of all, the fact that we are called. And the way we are called is different, but the fact is that we are called and um, to be convinced of that, you know, each of us convinced of that personally, right? Um, the second thing, we move on to the qualifications. Okay, what really qualifies us? Okay. Um, what qualifies us to be communicators, to be preachers of uh, the, uh, so on behalf of God? Right, uh, what what qualifies us? Right, when we look at the epistles, Paul uh, writes to Timothy, and uh, he mentions. I think we would have seen it um, uh, earlier also. 
Um, so he writes about the qualifications, both in Timothy, uh, Epistles to Timothy and also to uh, Titus. He, uh, he lists down a few things. Okay, so and it's it's very important that we just visit that. Okay, so we uh, I'm, I'm reading from First Timothy chapter three. Okay, uh, and he says, if a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. Okay, and um, so this is somebody who's wanting to do spiritual ministry. Okay, bishop, spiritual overseer, right? So he lists down some things here. Well, from verse two, the bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence, uh, and so on. Not a, not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil then he talks about deacons must be reverent not double-tongued not given to much wine not greedy for money holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience um, let them be tested then serve um, and then talks about their wives and so on so the thing is this in all this when we look at this list these couple of lists and then we look at, um, you know, Second uh, uh, Timothy chapter two and verse twenty-four. Right? He says, uh, "And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, um, and so on." So you see that uh, a lot of weightage and emphasis on character okay on being christ like okay that seems to be the overwhelming qualification there right uh, and not so much in terms of personality not so much in terms of giftedness which is important not so much in terms of ability you know these are things that all of us can learn Right, uh, the ability to communicate, the ability to communicate well, which we are looking at, right? We are some of the practical things, and these are things that we can learn, right? We can learn, um, but we see the emphasis on character, on being Christ like. Okay, so which means that how I live my life uh, is going to be uh, is going to be so much part of my message or the message that I speak okay so we cannot um, we cannot isolate or we cannot separate the message and the person now it's going to be one and the same the man and the message is going to be you know it's going to be a, such a intertwined uh, you know thing that you're not going to separate both okay so uh, the in the importance of uh, speaking or importance of living right right now if you look at Titus okay uh, Titus we see the same thing Titus chapter 1 um, Paul says you know for this reason uh, 1 and verse 5 chapter 1 verse 5 for this reason I left you in Crete that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you if a man is blameless the husband of one wife having faithful children not accused of dissipation or insubordination for a bishop uh, must be blameless as a steward of God not self-willed not quick-tempered not given to wine not violent not greedy for money but hospitable a lover of what is good sober-minded just holy self-controlled holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who contradict okay so again the importance of character okay character coming first and he also mentions ability there able able to teach okay able to teach uh, able to share uh, you know, able to rule so all these abilities, or able to do this, able to do this. All that is mentioned, but you you see that uh, the character is very very important. 
okay so it's it seems like a very simple thing but uh, so that's the that's the main thing okay for what qualifies us is our life uh, is our life is what qualifies is uh, christ likeness you know so um, that is something that we need to pursue in order to be in order to be you know uh, mouth, mouthpieces or spokespersons for god just pursue that wholeheartedly okay so that's what i was saying take heed to yourself you know be careful your choices what's going on in the inside of you your imaginations your thoughts um, your choices uh, when nobody's watching when there's no audience you know really when there's no audience when there's no you know people to speak to people to preach to right you know, when there's no audience you know what is going on what is there internally it's it's going to be very impo important okay okay so let's look at um, the, in the notes uh, this theologian uh, unger he gives seven spiritual qualifications okay uh, an expositor or a, uh, someone who communicates someone who teaches the word okay um, well the first one is uh, is a very uh, basic one uh, it's, it's a given right the uh, expositor as a regenerated believer meaning that uh, well it seems you know like in that in those days that there could be people who were they were people who were actually sharing the gospel or you know they were professional preachers uh, but who were not regenerate believers meaning they had not put their trust uh, and they had not received christ as lord and savior okay so we understand that okay uh, to some extent we can understand because um, the church being red hot you know during the uh, in the early church the book of acts we see that and then um, you know um, we read about the dark ages church history we see that the, you know the whole church slipping into a mere formality and uh, religion and everything um, you know ritualistic etc wrong beliefs and etc so obviously to lead such a church there must have been leaders right? so to lead such a church there must have been leaders who were not really believers because how can you lead a church like that right so therefore uh, this first qualification that the person must be a regenerate believer so um, that's that's a given so the person must have received jesus as lord and savior and not just a professional uh, thing you know like um, without having faith in christ okay the second one is that uh, to be spirit filled and spirit taught okay to be full of the spirit to be filled with the spirit and to be taught by the spirit okay then now that also again which means that you know when you say that okay these are the you know these are some qualities some qualifications that is required which means that the opposite of it is also possible okay so uh, in giving these uh, qualifications they're ruling out um, the opposite of it we need to understand that okay so uh, in ruling out that they're okay a person cannot be a uh, cannot be not a believer and uh, and then preach right a person um, cannot be uh, not spirit filled and not spirit taught and then um, you know preach the gospel because it is true the possibility is true and it's sad that uh, um, in today's church or maybe even in those days that this was uh, this was this was there this was a possibility right so spirit filled so we know uh, we see uh, that um, um, you, know, you know in in Colossians three and um, uh, where Paul is saying that the word of Christ dwell in you um, that um, and then we see in Ephesians uh, be filled with the Spirit right uh, Ephesians five and verse eighteen be filled with the Spirit um, and uh, we know that being filled with the Spirit the Spirit of God will lead us to uh, the Word and therefore we need to be uh, filled with the word as well allow the word to dwell in us richly as well which we saw in uh, which you see in colossians 3 and verse 16 so being filled with the spirit and being led by the spirit being taught by the spirit of god right so having the understanding and having the awareness that uh, the holy spirit is the teacher okay and not just stopping with that but relying Okay, so many times, you know, we could do this, right? We, 
we we have the understanding the holy spirit is a teacher the holy spirit is the one who leads us into all truth um but how much of that do i really expose my life to really open up my heart to right uh if this is the truth then you know do i spend time saying god you you speak to me god you teach me god you take me further into the word lord you make sure that i'm grounded and lord you you know you 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 teach right so so that's the thing to be spirit filled and spirit taught but when it comes to practically maybe even preparing to minister uh, or uh, you know putting together how much are we spirit taught right how much are we um, yielded to and dependent uh, on the leading of the spirit Okay. it's a very important thing right so uh, second one being spirit filled and spirit taught um the third one is a divinely called and commissioned that's what we looked at right uh, and a person of exemplary christian character again you know uh, the importance of character because it's a foundation um the the most beautiful of messages the most eloquent of messages uh can be cancelled by one act of irreverence right uh one act of unrighteousness right cancelled in the sense in the eyes of the audience right of course god does not cancel us in that way but then that message is does not have its weight or it becomes inauthentic in the eyes in the ears of the hearer because they see our life which speaks much much louder than our words right okay so uh, exemplary christian character uh the fifth one the exposit as a person of prayer okay now this is again a big one right a person of prayer a person who fellowships who communes with god in prayer okay um um i know we've you know learned about prayer different kinds of prayer already gone through that uh, thing yeah prayer and intercession yeah the course so we know, we know the you know importance of prayer and the different types of prayer and and all that and and the thing is this you know to be a person who is uh, a person of prayer to be a person who's increasing growing uh in this um you know in this uh i won't say use the word field but really uh in fellowship with the holy spirit in prayer and very very uh, important crucial because it's in prayer that we our hearts are um, yielded it's in prayer that we receive um it's in prayer that a lot of things happen like a lot of transaction spiritual transaction happens in prayer right and um and if we if we are missing out on that then we are missing out on a large part of what it means to be um a person who uh who's a communicator of the truth of god's word right so uh to be a person of prayer um uh, the sixth one is uh to be a student of the word okay. to be a student of the word so you know never stop now, these are basic things again you've heard it never stop learning i right? never stop learning always being curious and and having that hunger in the presence of god because there's so much to know there's so much that god can because he's infinite and we are finite in our understanding in our uh, everything uh, but from the infinite one you know he is more than willing to teach us he's more than willing to show us okay um you know one verse which uh, which always um uh you know is encouraging is mark chapter 4 uh, uh, where the lord jesus uh, talks about those all those parables the parable of the sower and um and then he he says in verse 23 right he he says in verse 23 if anyone has ears to hear let him hear then he said to them take heed what you hear with the same measure you use it will be measured to you and to you who hear more will be given 
Okay, so verse 23 and 24, if anyone has ears, let him hear. Take heed what you hear, with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So what is the measure that we are using in order to hear? Okay, what is that quantity? Um, what is that vessel you know, that we are using to hear? So um, is we are, you know, as students of the word, uh, spending that time in studying the word and uh, spending time in learning, uh, not just reading, but learning um, and, and the measure that we use because Holy Spirit is the teacher. He's the one who leads us into all truth. So the measure that we use, uh, if you go with the big you know, measure, which, you know, uh, when you look at, the, um, uh, I mean, just to apply it practically, if you can look at it, uh, what is my interest level? What is my hunger level? What is my level of, um, you know, uh, a level of uh, or intent or desire? Right? And the reason, there's a reason why Paul writes, you know, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, you know, in the area of gifts of this desire. So what is my desire level? So there is an expectation, there is this desire in order to receive from God. And so, um, as a student of the word, that's one. And seventh one, as a person using the spiritual gifts. And so, we see that, um, you know, when we look at 1 Corinthians 12, um, let's just look um, at that verse, 1 Corinthians 12. And... Um, Uh, verse 7 says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Okay, The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So the gifts of the Spirit are, uh, are described as the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, meaning the display, the... Um, uh, you know, the, the open display uh, of the Holy Spirit, expression of the Holy Spirit. So, so this is it. The manifestation of the Spirit is given, the, meaning these gifts, for the profit of all, for the benefit of all. So when it comes to the, the ministry of the Word, it is for edification, it is for building up. It is for convicting. It is for you know all those things that happen. You know, just that the word might be that go forth as a fire. That the word might go forth as the hammer, and so on. So, uh, so that's ministry of the uh, you know of the word. So, when I, when I when we understand that the gifts actually exp are expressions of the Holy Spirit. And the gifts are the benefit or the profit of all. Then, as a minister, then you, know, you and I we should not hold back. Right? We should not hold back for whatever reason. Like it could be fear, or maybe we are in a setting where um, we think, "Hey, what will people think?" Right? Um, maybe they they're not used to it. So why should I? You know, and then we hold back. Right? So Paul actually, when writing to Timothy, you know, we know, right? He says, uh, "For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind." It's in the context of using the gifts, right? So Paul says to Timothy, and he says, uh, "You know, you you use these gifts, um, use these gifts that were given to you, that were uh, when by through the laying on of hands of the eldership. So uh, use these gifts." Um, and then he says that. Um, yeah, God has not given us a spirit of um, fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So um, over and over again, he reminds him, stir up the gift which was given to you. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Okay, So, um, so a person who is a, a carrier of the word of God uh, is also led by the spirit of God, is also manifesting the gifts of the spirit because it's for the benefit of all okay um okay another theologian gibbs you no know, he outlines uh, similar you know qualifications uh, but also talks about you know one who loves the lord jesus you know if you look at that second list that is there uh, it says one who loves the lord jesus uh, one who uh, and one who loves the lord jesus definitely cannot not love people right 
I should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, mind, soul, and strength, and love others like yourself. So the love of God enables us to love others. So uh, saying must love souls, meaning people who need God, people who need the word, uh, we must be able to love them in order to minister to them effectively. You notice that the Lord, uh, you know, uh, well, in, in this conversation with Nicodemus, the Lord says, God so loved the world that he gave his son. So it was out of love that motivated him to give or he sent his son to redeem. So it is you know, out of love. And we also see in the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus, he saw the people and he was moved with compassion. Right. So anything that he did, it was out of love, out of compassion for the people. It was not some surgical, clinical thing. Okay, I need to get this done. I'm totally detached from these people. Uh, I need to share, speak this message. Uh, let me get it done and over with. It was never like that. He was so involved. Right? He loved the people. He had compassion on the people. And he was motivated out of the love. So we see that the whole act of redemption itself is motivated out of love right? to save a dying world. Okay, so, so also are we ourselves as uh, ministers of the message of God. Uh, well, first of all, we love him and we also love the people whom he has uh, entrusted us with or he takes us to. Right? Now, it's not an easy thing, right? Because people irritate, people <laughs> do all kinds of things. Right, as we also do, we also, you know, uh, we we do irritate others. We do all kinds of another excusing our behavior. Right, so it is uh, it it is not the easiest of things to love. Um, but the Lord Jesus, uh, he very in one sweeping statement, he just said, you know, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you and spitefully use you. Just said love. So. It is not possible without the love of God in us, right? So, but it is possible to love others with the love of God, with His love in our, in our hearts, right? So, it's important to love souls because we—that's the example that we see in ministry, uh, in the ministry of the Lord Jesus. So, also we must love. Okay, and we see the others. You know, a student of the Word must be a person of prayer. Must be clean in life, meaning character again. Must be fit for the work, spiritually, physically, mentally, and uh, educationally. Okay. Okay. So, if we could summarize that, um, a person, a man or woman of God, a person who is of the word, of character, of prayer, and empathy. So we see all this. Uh, it's a well-rounded, well wholesome, um, you know, thing that we need to be, um, which which really qualifies us. Uh, we need to pursue. Okay. Now, as we see this, you know, um, most of what happens is uh, we begin to evaluate ourselves, our lives, and we say, okay, I need to grow in this, I need to grow in this, I need to grow in this, or you know, this, is, this is not there in my life, uh, you know, therefore, uh, therefore, you know, you cancel yourself out, You're saying, okay, uh, I can't be, I don't want to be because this is not there in your life. You know, well, that's one approach. The other approach, or the, the right approach is to say, okay, this is not there. This is at a very, um, you know, uh, it needs to grow. Uh, it is not at a level where I, where I want it to be. So as I pursue God, you know, let this grow, right? As God leads me and places me and takes me to people with the message, let these things grow in my life. Right? So that would be a good approach where we are not waiting, sitting around waiting for all these to come to, you know, on a scale of one to 10, we wanted to reach 10 and go beyond and where we are waiting for that to happen. And then, you know, we're saying, okay, Lord, now I'm ready. The thing is to say, God, I'm ready. I know that I'm a work in progress and I need to progress in all these areas and I'm willing to progress in all these areas. I'm giving myself to the word. I give myself, I take it to myself uh, and to the doctrine. And I, you know, I want to, I, I desire the spiritual gifts. I 
pursue love to make that journey right and uh, and to and to see those changes happen in ourselves uh, and the lord using us uh, as mouthpieces like the people whom god used definitely it's it's not like they reached a level of you know uh, complete perfection and therefore god used so no, he used them with all their limitations but their hearts were sold out to god they said okay god you know i'm pursuing you and god used them so so also that if we would make that uh, you know that transition you know if we are just waiting and saying okay god i need to change this this i will change and then i will uh, I'll, I'll wait i'll change and then i'll do this no god says okay i will change you but in the uh, in the changing itself you know i will use you know, if you look at uh, what the lord jesus told his disciples um you know it's very important that we uh, we see that verse, right? Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. Okay, we'll finish with this. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. Okay, the Lord says, Follow me and I will make you. Okay, so that's the order, right? Follow me and I will make you. So in the following, there is a making. And he is doing the making even as we do the following. Right, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Okay, uh, being fishers of men, of course, you know, the whole thing of carrying on the message of maybe uh, as evangelists, as pastors, as prophets, as teachers, or any other form of ministry. Um, but the Lord will make us as we follow Him. So it's not for us to stop and wait and say, "God, change." Then I will, you know, begin to follow. You know, as we follow. He will, he will make us. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here. So we were looking at uh, the qualifications of uh, call and the qualifications of necessary uh, for a picture. Something that we know already. There's just a reiteration of it. And the next um, session, we will go into the ministry of the word, the importance of the word. So we are going into the message part of it. Right. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Have a nice day. Bye bye.